Welcome back from the break. This is Nikas, and this is the Great Sober Sex Forum. Um, so we're at the question and answer portion of the event. Uh, if you've got a question for one of these guys in, in their sexual journey that they shared with us tonight, that'd be great, or today, um, ask away. If you would like to sort of just check in where you're at sexually, uh, please, by all means, this is the time and place to do that. Um, if you'd like to talk about fears or talk about solutions or talk about any, anything regarding uh, and related to the sexual sober journey. So uh, who'd like to start? Okay, this is my sober story. It's my first exposure to polyamory. So uh, I was in a park in North Hollywood yeah. and there were guys playing uh, soccer. So there was this uh, tall bearded redhead that caught my eye. And uh, so I kind of bumped into him. And uh, uh, long story short, it turns out he's a, he's a newly by polyamorous uh, and experimenting with boys. So I was pretty happy to do that with him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, nice. Uh, yeah. the, uh, uh, he was pretty far. And, um, uh, anyway, so he was educating me about polyamory. He had his longtime girlfriend, he had the two women he's fucking. And, and then he was fucking boys, and he said, I'm the first boy, man, that he uh, doesn't want to just trick with him. Uh, but he was teaching me about polyamory because I, we had a date one night, and um, uh, he was giving instructions on how to be gentle with his dick because he, had, he was all worn out from fucking some uh, funky girl. And I got all mad that he would not save himself you know, 24 hours for me without getting worn out. And he explained that polyamory, you're, you have to be really happy if your loved one is happy and is, is happy with sex and, and is out being fulfilled. So that was a little bit of education. And so we dated for about six months, and then when I told him I'd fall in love with him, he dropped me. Oh, I went to the polyamory club. Uh, in that period. What's that? Um, well, they were meeting in Palmer Park. And they were having some sort of a pot thing, and uh, it was it was men and women who sleep with men and women. So it was bisexual polyamorous club. It, 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 it exists. Mm -hmm. Clearly, so, yes. right. so, uh, so, so that was my first exposure to that. And I started watching the polyamorous show on the Showtime. And, uh, awesome. So it's a it's a lot of it's a great story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, uh, I mean, I've always felt polyamorous in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never uh, liked monogamy. Mm -hmm. So I was glad that there's an official uh, method of the uh, other. Yeah. Can, can I, uh, how does, like, so I'm HIV positive, and I just wonder, how, how does that whole, I mean, does, do people disclose that stuff with each other? Do you just have safe sex? Do you, how, how does that um, work? Uh, well, I mean, we all have full disclosure, uh -huh. so I don't know what other people do, but you kind of have to. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if, if, if the premise is you're potentially building to for true intimacy, you can't lie. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matter of opinion, I suppose. Right. Okay. Do 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 you actually sit down and meet the other people, or do you just? Oh, he, 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 well, in this case, no. I he never wanted me to meet his women. Uh huh. Yeah, he, that was. Uh, you know, the, that, that never happened. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was perfectly happy to meet his right. long-term girlfriend. I thought that was interesting. They would go to the uh, gay center and prom and that stuff. But um, I, I mean, there were other issues going on because he, he didn't want me to get uh, hooked on him. Hooked on what? Hooked on him. Hooked on him, okay. Yeah, he, yeah. So this was polyamorous in the sense of you were with somebody who had multiple partners. Yeah, I mean, we were having a emotional sort of relationship. Okay. He wasn't very convincing. Okay. So, it, but it was not in the sense of you were you were partnered with oh, his. Okay. Yeah. Go no, ahead. No, no, he was he, he was the one who was living polyamory. Okay. I was the guest star. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> And and what did you say when, when you said that you you're you're falling in love that that was the end of it? Yeah, he he, 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 he took me out to his, a 
nice dinner mm -hmm. and explained that um, you know he's in his thirties and still needed to fuck a lot of different guys before mm -hmm. he got serious with a guy. Okay. So, so that was the end of that. Yeah. So that will teach me. Uh -huh. Um, so, what, I mean, so he is in a polyamorous relationship. Would, would it more? Would could be maybe just called an open relationship? I mean, if, if there's multiple and 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 a non and non-specific love thing. Yeah, or? the definitions. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm just wondering. You're right. But, but, I mean, I know his long-term girlfriend. Let me say long-term, at least ten years. Uh huh. And she had her girlfriends. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah, it sounds. I mean. You know, we used to call it multi-poly. Yeah. Right. I mean, without the emotional component, it was just being promiscuous. Uh-huh, right. right. Gotcha. He was all very serious about the uh, polyamory and, and you know, look him up on the internet like he's speech for polyamory. Uh-huh. Gotcha. So, uh, cool. But you're, you're right. It's more like open relationship. Yeah. And that's a good question, actually. Uh, I, I can just ask the question. Yeah. Is, the difference between an open relationship and a polyamorous relationship. Uh, to me, the polyamorous relationship is more um, self-enclosed. Yeah. And not necessarily an open relationship. Yeah. Uh, but it's within, you know, the two or three or four or whatever the number it is, but it's close-ended. Yeah. Whereas open relationship is, you know, various, um, you know, one stands right. Yeah, but then he said he was in an open poly one, didn't you? Say yeah. With your like yeah. those guys who bring Robert and you know you were like. <laughs> yeah, that, like that really sounded like a polyamorous relationship that you were describing. It you was. Know? We were just very decadent people. <laughs> we were I mean, decadent well, sexual well, appetites. Was, you know, yeah, we they would well, bring in more, center, but I mean the centerpiece was a yeah, yeah yeah. When it came de down to like it was us three. And, yeah. you know, when everybody else went home, it was like, exactly. there we were. We were like, you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> question. Yes. Richard Alcohol. Richard. I have questions, but I wanted to check in first. And um, so I went to this group a month ago, the first Saturday of every month. And yeah. it was like a little cry about, you know, sad things with what's going on with my mom's Alzheimer's and um, feeling some shame with, um, with, not so much shame coming back in the program, but actually some relief and some honesty in coming back, but some shame of the bathhouse sex that we talked mm -hmm. about last week. And um, so just some interesting experiences since that last month with this group. I mean, it was like, it's a freedom to like, there was something that was blocking me from talking about that I was HIV positive, undetectable in here because of the fear of somebody in the room that I knew. And so I got that out of the way after the meeting. And, um, and then, you know, getting a more further in truth myself, because what you had just said, you know, like in sobriety, disclosing that or feeling like I'll be rejected if I disclose that mm -hmm. has not been my prominent practice. If I'm asked, sometimes I tell the truth, sometimes I lie. But it's, if, you know, Nikas and I did a trip for his birthday to the desert um, last weekend, and I got to practice that approach mm -hmm. with the people, you know, somebody that I told that had been, um, several times that I had told differently and it didn't change his approach and coming over. It was like so weird, but I was like, oh, I don't know. And he was like, I like you, you're nice, but I, you know, it was always, he's this and I'm that, so that's not going to happen. And it was a, it was a very freeing, and then I didn't get off, even though like I said, and I also said, I want raw sex. Like I was naming everything I wanted and he was okay. Like I was like, oh. So it was a lot of growth in this 32 days and mm -hmm. I'm a little over, um, what is it? like 25 hours of being a non-smoker so that's a really interesting 35 years of smoking since i was 17 with very few like in a relationship because my ex wanted me to stop mm -hmm. and putting a patch on it and putting a something on it and taking a pill for it and this is just cold hypnosis and a really free so far so mm -hmm. i'm only here right now I'm not um but my questions for both of you so that was my check-in when you said guys are just guys, a man is a man, I'm going to be a man. And then I heard you in a very different approach from both things. So, so I have two different questions for each of you. So like man, man, it's kind of a two-part question. Do you mean straight, gay, or is gay man? I heard you in a way that says gay man, have, I don't have any experience with how to be monogamous, nor do I ever feel like that feeling can ever be possible. And I heard you say from my mind, which may not be true, but nor have I, but in this relationship, I have that experience right now. 
And so my question was like, we all find our truths where we come, where we go. Like I was in a relationship that we were both saying we were and we weren't. Then I've been in the things where let's do this and let's do that. But I haven't been in that pure monogamous. And my head, as like, much as I don't want to be like that goody, because I have no experience, but that's where my heart wants to go. And I think when I try to make that different, I, um, it doesn't mean it even will ever be, but I know that when you said what feels right, and even if you feel bad with that person for that moment, but you feel like you're with them, I don't know how to like put love in three different people. So, but I don't have any experience on being monogamous. So I wanted the views on what you meant by a man being a man, and I wanted your explanation on where you're at now. And does that mean you go? You can possibly go back to an open one and the next one. If this doesn't work, like those are just my questions. So whoever wants to go. So the question, what the question you had for me was, because man, just a man. I was hearing that you feel like it. My suggestion was you have no experience with monogamy, or you do, and you know who you are, and you don't believe you'll ever want that for yourself. And, um, then, and then were you referring to gay or straight, and a man is just a man? I was referring to all men. Okay. <laughs> all of you them. didn't say I know women gay, are all straight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I know I know a few women too that are all yeah. that are kind of into, you know that are into just. Okay. And I love you. Thank you both. I mean, they're both sure. amazing. I'm, yeah, I meant kind of I'm more like you, and then I kind of want to be like that. <laughs> like it was like. Yeah, I, I think all, all men are like that, pretty much. I mean, it's it's half and half with me. I, I, ha, I took, uh, half of it is, I haven't met one yet. <laughs> you know, no. Yeah. You know, um, and then it's also sort of a, a defense or a protection mechanism for myself. Because when you so, let that guy go, that you said, this is who I am, when my place was it coming from a spot of, I can't change, or did you really just want to go have other sex that day? When you let the guy of six months that you're still best friends with now? Um, in that moment, I was like, uh, there was a little bit of that, you know, like I wanted to get online and, and, and do my thing. But uh, I knew if you just get online, Eddie, why he's like watching TV and he asks you, you know, it's going to end badly. And I was like, I'm tired of that ending badly. Right. And I, that's so, you know, 1960 something. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, you know. I got online and I was like, you need to just say it. Just fucking say it. Mm -hmm. You love the guy, Eddie. Just tell him. Grow up. It was more like that. Right, right, right. And see what happens. Because with me, I had never done that. It was always like, oh, let's just fuck it up passive aggressively. It's to be the same little mm -hmm. bitch that we've always right, been. Right, right. Or are we going to grow up and just like, because you do love this guy, Eddie. And so it was all about, and I'm in program. I can't lie. I mean, you can, you but it's going to end badly. Mm -hmm. And the only person I'm going to hurt is me. It's really, I'm not going to really cause harm to too many other people. So I just had to take a deep breath and I had, I needed to know what that felt like. And, you know, it was really shitty, but, you know, it worked out. So did, did you choose to end the relationship rather than ask, ask, would it be possible if we opened this? No, I just said Jason. Like, Jason and I were really headed for the church. Okay. We were looking at crazy. Yeah, I mean, we, I we were doing yeah, crazy we things. I allowed myself to get caught up with him. Uh -huh. And Jason, uh, I was like his second, you know, boyfriend ever. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was like, okay, I don't want to break this guy's heart. Because, I mean, first of all, I, I, at that moment, I was like, how did I end up with such a guy that's like, almost like a virgin? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, his, his virtues and his views were so pure and so new and so I was like okay whatever um and so I was just like don't don't you don't have to destroy that you don't have to just destroy anymore you said something about that you don't have to kill it <laughs> right? you know it's not that I didn't uh I didn't want to end it with him mm -hmm. I just needed to I just needed to like open this up and maybe take a break you okay. know it's time for you to go home now Jason and then it was like no don't say that because that is not what you mean Eddie like my sponsor's mm -hmm. voice was on my head do not lie yeah. Don't lie. Don't bullshit. Don't do that to him. He doesn't deserve that. He he's done nothing wrong, yeah. you know. And so I was like, okay, here's what has to happen. <laughs> you know, we're not doing any of this <laughs> because you know yeah. my education to relationships and my views. You know, I said, you know, I basically tell Jason, you know, I've worked really hard on these views, and this is what keeps me happy. Mm -hmm. This is what keeps me from hurting other people, yeah. and this is how it is. And then I had to just take the chance on him walking out on me, yeah. and he did. So I was like, oh, here we are again. So we're going to process being alone. But then when he walked back in the house, I was like, oh. 
And that's when, you know, to me that was the gift of being honest. Mm-hmm. I got another gift. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, this program thing, you just have to be really honest and you have to just not be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, not intentionally. right? <laughs> and like, things are all going to work out. Mm-hmm. So, and like, they have, like, so, mm-hmm. so I wasn't, I guess I'm. That's a perfect, yeah. yeah. I wasn't like, yeah, I wasn't trying to hurt him. I wasn't saying I want to end it all together because he's hot, you know, <laughs> and he's, he was a good guy. I mean, mm-hmm. out of all my people I knew in the desert in program, he was really the only one that would be like, hi, how, what are you doing? And he wouldn't have a shirt on. And I was like, fuck, who is this guy? He won't leave me alone. Or he'd call, hi, what are you doing? And I'm like, you're not wearing a shirt, are you? And he's like, no, it's so hot outside. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what did I do? So, you know, I guess to answer your questions, I I, I, I didn't, I, yeah, I, I just needed to be honest and see, and see what happens right. when you're honest. Right. So, um, and it, I was just, I really, I was wanted to, I wanted to protect me. I wanted to protect him a little bit because I knew if I get, if I do marry him, if I do all this, I'm going to lie, I'm going to mm. cheat, I'm going to wreck it. And then he'll never talk to me again. Yeah. And there are t- now being in program, I'm like, you know, people are worth things to me. You know, like I have to stop and think, wait, now, back up. <laughs> you know, he's more than, you know, take a look at this person. Why are you with this person? And, you know, do you want to just get rid of it all? Because you're just going to start over. <laughs> so, you know, I think before I, you know, do things um, sometimes. But mm-hmm. did that answer your question? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, thank you for your question. And, and I just want to sort of bring it around to this idea that it, it, you what you're wanting is an objective, like... Like, your truth second. change and evolve through sobriety, like where you are now to where it was. Absolutely. It's going to go back yes. to the other way. But, and what you're looking for, to me, what I think you're looking for is, is an objective idea of what a relationship should be. And there is no objective, uh, there's no objective definition of what a good relationship is, what how a relationship should be. At its core, a relationship is two people coming together and agreeing upon things. And the, the thing that has killed more relationships is this idea that there should be some sort of objective like definition of what the relationship is supposed to be, because then you there's it, it that won't happen. Like I have an idea of what I think a relationship is, and this other person has an idea, and we either agree or we don't, right? And so it's about the communication. It's about like, are we on the same page? Do we? And, and when you met your friends who were absolutely on the same page and thriving in a relationship that was equal and beautiful and and, and sexually powerful and all that stuff, like. It was because they were on the same page, right? And when you have two people who are agreed to be monogamous and, and, and they choose to be, not because the relationship is telling them they have to be, or not because society is telling them they have to be, because that's a, such a recipe for disaster. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like, no, when they have both chosen something and they both chosen together to be in that together, then the relationship thrives. It, that's, and that is the only way. Even if somebody says, yes, I can, and the other one says, no, I don't want it, that could still go forward if the communication is there. No, but, I'd say you need to really agree with what you both No, I'm saying, what if they agree? One says, I want to be just with you, and the other person says, I want to be with you and other people, and then the person who wants to be just with you goes, well, okay. <laughs> and that and goes, you have a relationship? Yeah. Well, that probably might be a little dangerous. <laughs> Just because, you know, someone's feelings eventually are going to be hurt, or right. someone's not going to feel like they're, or someone's going to. But these are the questions I want to ask with them. Like, how, right. like you said, it kind of naturally happened that you both wanted that same thing right now and right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if that changes, then and you have we to both are it. men, and we both are men who have, you know, sexual lives and sexual, you know. Uh, Feelings and emotions and all that stuff. And are there ever moments, I guess my question for you, that says you you fantasy outside of thinking of being with somebody well, of else? Course. Okay. But but the thing is, is he said, you know what, if something ever happens where you suddenly you're in a situation and you someone offers to have sex with you, go ahead, I don't care. You know, like it was that he didn't own it. And I'm not gonna do that. I've decided I'm not gonna do that. Like if that situation happens, I kind of take the compliment and I'll keep going because I don't know, and that's just the choice I've made right now. Is to sort of like see if I can do it. It's sort of like a yeah. personal challenge. <laughs> to see if I can do something. And and not because I don't ever want to have sex with anyone ever right. else again. And I may. Right. Uh, but right now it's it's been fun to just sort of be and both be on the same page. Uh, where I wouldn't be jealous if he told me he had had sex with someone else. And how long and, have you guys been together? Uh, almost three years now. Oh, we were, we were apart for a year because. Um, we were both sober, but he drank, and 
and this was right after we were in a relationship. So I, you know, I said, hey, let's take a break. You know, really sort of maybe you need to sort of find out what's going on. And and we were still friends. We chat and talked all the time in that period. But but so the time we've been back together has been about a year, uh, year and a half. Yeah. So, but um, but the thing is, is that for me, it really is truly about having that synthesis of of being on the same page, being absolutely honest, and having the same motives and the same um, the same. Uh, Anticip- or not anticipation, but it's the same uh, goals for the relationship. You know, it's it's um, for me that I found that's the only way. I've been in so many relationships where you know I had a goal that I knew was at odds with their goals, and it would always pop out. Like the, what I wanted would always come to surface and, and yeah. sort of take precedence over what they wanted uh, because it was just you know I, it's just the way it works. Yeah. Men are men, right? But if you're two men agreeing to be in something, whether it's polyamorous or whatever, then it's just, you don't have that conflict. You don't right. have the conflict of not of having to wonder if, you know, you're not on the same page. I have a question. Um, yes. This, either, either one of you or both. Um, did the situation ever come up where, because, uh, you know, you laid, you laid the groundwork with your partners and uh, about the polyamorous or open relationship and did that come up about meeting someone that I guess, you know, the whole thing with jealousy is is my partner, I'm not I'm single, but is the partner gonna meet someone that they fall in love with? You know. Um, that's like the fear, the base fear, maybe in, in having that open or I mean sure. Even if you're in a mon- monogamous relationship it doesn't stop that from happening, it's gonna happen, but I guess the context of that, you know, like how, how do you yeah. approach that discussion? You know, um, you've opened the door and, you know, how, how does that come about? Well, for me, it's, it's agreeing on terms, right? Like agreeing on, you know, what how, how our communication is and what we tell each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, keeping secrets, um, is not good in sobriety and it's not good in a relationship. You know, it's like because the secrets will absolutely, especially if you're holding them back because you're you're either in a shame spiral around it or you're trying to be selfish and self-centered and get what you want out of it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. either way, if, it, if it's coming from one of those spaces, you're 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 allowing this sort of negative toxicity to exist under the surface of the relationship, and it's not good for a relationship. Right. If you're if if you're gonna, you know, if that's who you are, and, and like with you, if, if you know yourself enough, and you know yourself well enough to know that, yeah, I probably will end up hurting that person. You know, then find the person who's gonna you know share that with you and share it in a way that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. about communication. You know, you're gonna have to on terms. And I guess is there really isn't any prediction that besides the now you can't fall in love with from what your question was like it could all be a great communication to go with here's the next one. Now I'm in love with somebody else. Like that you don't know that that can happen right, either. Right, right. But that could be on monogamy or not. Right. You know? right. For me, like a lot of that's like now, like, oh well, when do I make a choice to, you know, sort of turn my attention to someone else? And allow that to become something right, right. that maybe I don't want to become, or he doesn't want to become, right? Yeah. Like, how do I, how am I, how am I aware of when I'm sort of mentally yeah. doing that? And, you know, I mean, I, there's certainly nothing wrong. I have a lot of sexual fantasies, and I, you know, I'm not like saying I need to be chased of mind or anything like that. But, um, but you know, I just have to remember that, oh, I'm in a relationship. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's the bottom line. And, oh, yeah, I'm in a relationship. There's two of us. Yeah. We, we, we make these decisions together. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like, uh, you know, that wherever you water your garden, it'll grow. If, if, if you're watering someone else's garden, I mean, it's, it's like, it, it actually takes an activity. It actually takes, mm. you have to actually spend time and energy yeah. Building something yeah, yeah. in order to fall in love. I mean, you you could be attracted to somebody, and hey, you know, but but like you just said, if you're in a relationship, oh look, at there's an attraction there. Oh, okay, cool. But I'm in a relationship. Sorry. That's yeah, yeah. the truth is 
I'm in a relationship, so I'm not even going to come over and sprinkle water on your garden. Well, well <laughs> unless that's okay in your relationship. Yeah, right. right, 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 right. right. If you ask me to, but then I gotta go. Home. <laughs> See you on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. But you know, it's that's one of those things where that inner integrity. I mean, for me, um, I know that sleeping with newcomers, right? So. Um, a neighbor come, comes to me and says, hey, I, I'm looking for sober sex partners. Great. Okay, cool. So here's the deal. We can't be, we can't hang out. We can't be friends, but we can be fuck buddies. But, and I have to know how often can I hang out with that person and, and I'm actually starting to build something. You know what I mean? It's like they're, they're, they're just hanging out sexually with somebody. It's like how much, how intimate, how close are you getting in that moment? It's like, you know, it's something can be built in that. And so for me, it's like, I have to be really, really clear and make it very clear to another human being, you know, what my intentions are and keep those intentions and those, 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 uh, what do you call it? Boundaries, very clear. Yes. Uh, so I had a question. Um, <laughs> I guess about doing this work in, in the sexual <coughs> uh, because I, I never have. I can always, I mean, one thing about being on a 20 year crystal run is you don't have to do any work. You know, it's just bam, bam, bam. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and I, boy, I admire both you guys. You know, I mean, I stayed until the wheels fell off. You guys, I mean, I wish I had that decade of being sober to practice this, but mm. here I am. I got my four months. So, so about doing the work, you know, in sobriety and regarding sex. I, I love all the things you guys said about the tools, right? Your communication and keeping your integrity in check. And you know, I, I love all this. By the way, this is like I tried many times to get sober, but now I'm loving. Do, I'm loving. I'm loving the work. Like the sex almost doesn't come up. I'm so like into the work, right? And I just want some feedback on, I don't know, I feel like I'm neurotic the way I'm doing it. And maybe I don't know if you guys can remember 10 years ago, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I hook up with somebody and, you know, I, it's like I put them on the couch. And, you know, act one is like I put them on the couch, right? You know, oh, I'm really sober at night and I'm vulnerable and, you know, you're sober, I'm sober, we do this <laughs> together. You know, I mean, there's so much, but I'm, but, but I'm sincere about it. I mean, it feels neurotic, but... I feel like I have to do a lot of work. I feel like I have to spend a lot of time communicating where I'm at, what I want, what feels safe, what I, you know, what my expectations are, and and, and then there's like a, like a payback, like you said, with that honesty. Before we ever get to the sex, there's an intimacy created, a safe space created. Like, like I'm treating it in a safe way. And I guess I wonder if it is, 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 is that kind of neurotic and it turns people off. They don't want like act one, you know, my, it's not my life story, but I'm, I'm creating a safe space. And I'm not used to doing that, right? Because it's always been, you know, right at it. So, um, <laughs> so getting used to, you know, how did you get used to doing the work? Did you, you know, spend hours, you know, telling people <laughs> you're vulnerable and you hope, you know, no, no. Or, you know, and when you get to the sex, I find that the sex kind of comes, once I've created that safe space, it kind of comes naturally, but I feel a little awkward, like, God, I'm boring this guy to death with, um, you know, all my vulnerabilities. <laughs> and should. No, I'll, I'll just feel that one, because I went through the exact same thing, right? What I found is you don't have to say a lot. Like, you, okay. you, your boundaries are yours. Right. Right? right? Either you let someone cross them or you don't, right? Okay. They are your boundaries. Yeah. Uh, if you let someone cross them, it's because they're not very strong enough for you. Sure. So, sure. Um, so there's not a lot. I mean, there's some things you probably can or should say, but that would take maybe 30 seconds, you know. Yeah. As but, opposed to 30 minutes. Right. Two, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to create something neutral. That's there, nice. Well, you know, having a, you know, a coffee with them can do all that, yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, and, uh, and and it's just really just letting it flow so that it doesn't get awkward, right? So and guess what? It'll get easier with time because you have trained yourself a certain way to have sex, 
and you're learning a new way to have sex. Have you ever had a job where the day you started it was easy? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever started a job that was easy day one? I just want someone else to say, yes, you're going to feel Oh, it gets weird, infinitely right? no, easier. Because it's weird, right? And it'll get simpler, and it'll get less weird, and it'll... And you won't have to say as much, and you won't have to. But it's I will commend you for you know taking care of yourself, honoring yourself, and being present with the moment, and saying this is where I'm at. Like that's beautiful. So no fault there. It's just it'll lead to that. Yeah, I I have I would have to agree. I, you have the balls to like even just interview people before, and I mean you're amazing in that. Like then they stay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, and I'm not being an asshole. I'm asking you, no, they yeah. stay. Damn, you're gifted. <laughs> you know what? I, uh, this feels, this feels kind of similar to when I first got clean. I got clean in LA, so I mean, you know, there was a lot of information <laughs> mulling around, you know, just me being clean, and people were like, oh my god, you know. What? what? What are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> so a few people here and there, you know, some from the old crew, some would hear that I was clean. They're like, how are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I used to tell them, they're like, well, I can't do this without doing this, and I can't do this without doing this. I'm like, then guess what? You can't do any of it yet. Mm -hmm. You can't do any of it yet until you cross over barriers and bridges and things like that. You know, like, uh, like I used to just, like, if you're feeling weird about this, wait. I mean, we're very self-sustaining people, mm -hmm. you know, we can just get it done until we're comfortable getting it done with somebody else and leave out the, you know, job application. <laughs> no, I but I mean, if you can get him in the sack with what you're doing now, damn, <laughs> that's pretty amazing after all the conversation. But I mean, like, that's, I'm kind of with you on that, you know, like, um, yeah. you know, you're going to arrive at, I'm going to fuck this guy. Right. And not talk. You're gonna arrive at that door when God wants you to arrive at the door, and He feels He feels all the work you've done is all done, and He's gonna swirl somebody into your life. It's only after your dick or whatever, and you're gonna be like, wow, I didn't have to talk at all. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I just got strength-wise, you know, I feel like I have to kind of, you know, almost like go to the altar first, and you know, you know. Which might very well be a very good thing to do yeah. because um, my sponsor told me before you leave your house to go to on a sex date, before you have somebody coming over to your house, get on your knees and pray. Mm -hmm. And so you might actually just say, hey, God, <laughs> please help me with this interaction. Please allow me to be the truest that I can actually be. I'll, you know, it's just ask for what it is that you need because otherwise it's self-will, trying to tell self-will, trying to tell self-will. It's just thinking, oh my God, and thinking is not where, you know, intuition is like, ah, yes, ah, no, you know. And this is your intuition. Like what you're doing yeah. right now, the natural way that you've moved into doing it, that is also your intuition. So there's uh -huh. some core of that, some piece of that yeah, that's sure. actually truly you. You know, being exactly being engaging with the person before yeah. you have sex. Yeah. Like maybe that's the core of what this is, and you just haven't gotten good at it yet. But And you shared this a month ago, which I thought was really cool, that you still exploring the same thing. I mean not on this level, but that yeah. you, like you weren't just jumping in. But at the same time, I do, I, mean, I, I like what Nika says, sex positive, I, I do want to jump in, I don't want to, I mean, I didn't get sober to be celibate. Right, right, right. That's the fucking thing. I mean, I'll fucking go back out, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not. Right, but we uh -huh. didn't get sober to put ourselves in danger either. So, right. you know, there's a beautiful, happy medium where mm -hmm. you are taken care of, you're supporting yourself, loving yourself, and your being, your own sexual being, which is beautiful and awesome. Okay, because Act 2 is like core core. <laughs> 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 yes. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you for both your shares and thank everybody for their questions and participation. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on the question, I had seven months sober uh, after many years of use, my birth choice is personal. Um, relapsed after exploring sex, uh, which I felt like was probably the trigger for my relapse, and now about 50 days ago. Um, and what I hear both of you saying, maybe I'm hearing, but is that part of the blessing and the challenge of sobriety is getting the chance to know ourselves authentically, and then getting the chance to know how we relate to other people authentically. 
I guess my challenge is that I'm not even at the point where I feel like I'm creating a safe space for others because I've so poisoned my sexual space through the years of using and the fear and distrust and bad situations that I got myself into. And at least I'm at the point where I'm taking responsibility for that now instead of blaming other people, which I'm doing for a long time. But I, I just, I was wondering if I would be where anybody else around the table has any pointers for how to go about that process in a healthy way. Because at this point, you know, I, I've gone about sort of prophylactic means of staying away from sex for a while, just to give my chance to self to rebuild myself and get to know myself better again. But uh, but I'd like to be able to do that in a healthy way without triggering myself. I don't think it's time to be in a relationship yet, so in some ways it's sort of off topic to the theme for this afternoon. But that would be really helpful if I can talk about that. I'll chime in on that one. So, you still feel that your sexual self is toxic? Is that what you were saying? A lot of ways. At least um, I'm tied into drug, to the drug use and separating the two and knowing myself and knowing what is healthy for me is part of it. Uh, to me, it was time. I mean, for me, it was time. I just had to let time go by. You know, like, however long it's going to take for poison you to become cleaner and more healthy. However long it's going to take is however long it's going to take. Um, I used to get this question a lot my first, because I, I was here a year and a half before I left LA to go to the desert. And in that year and a half, I, you know, people were starting to kind of get clean and they want, like they, I would run into a lot of guys that were wanting to, because the party was clearly ending in LA, like the 90s were over and it was just a small train wreck. And I used to try to tell them the same thing. They're like, how are you doing this? And I said, well, you know, I haven't done anything with anybody, in, you know, in six months. Um, uh, and I said, I'm very self-sustaining. You know, I know that if I go out and try to, you know, have sex with someone or people or whatever, that it, it's not time yet. Like, you have to trust your instincts. If the answer is no or I don't know, it's no. And like they, some of my friends were like, okay. And some of them were like, well, I don't like that. And every, I'm like, oh dude, don't do that to yourself. Don't torture yourself because that's what, what you're really saying is, you know, I want to change my feelings, you know, and I want to go out and do this. Um, I just put it all down for a while. You know, I was just like, no, I, I want to get clean and stay clean. So I just, I thought, okay, I need to make me healthy again. I can fucking beat off. I can have sex with myself. Thank God. And when it's time for me and when I'm strong enough and healthy enough and I, I have the right motives for going out and doing it, if it's all just pure lust, then it's on. Now that I'm going to look, it was an experience for me. I had, you know, it takes, in my opinion, it takes a lot of work to build up to, you know, the dog pile <laughs> and being able to leave one and people are all like, oh, what do you want? And I'm like, nothing, bitch, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you let all those guys fuck you claim like that's my favorite part yeah. I mean I, I was the uh, I had to anchor uh, a three way double penetration with these two guys and I was on top of one and this was in the last two years and I had the other guy behind me and um, you know they weren't small guys and the guy underneath me is like how are you doing this and oh my god you're, he was like, you know doing all this you know emotional stuff you're a star you feel so hot blah 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 and he asked me how, what do you want and I said not a damn thing no, you need to shut up and keep going. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> he had this look on his face, like, really? And to me, that's true power right there. When you can accumulate that kind of power as a gay guy, you know, or as a gay man, and go out and have sex like that and not need anything, that's a fucking powerful bitch right there. And see, that's what I wanted to be like. I was like, okay, you know, our 20s, you know, in your 20s, you should just have it because you're, you're like a machine. You know, but I was 35 when I got clean, so I mean, I wasn't a young, I wasn't a young man anymore. So I was like, but I still want to go there. But instead of pitching a fit and going and using and having to keep starting over and starting over, I was like, okay, I need to figure out how I can get back that because I've lost it, and it was time. Thanks. Yeah, um, you hit it on the, the nail on the head when you talk about motives. Like, really, just you, it's about knowing yourself. And knowing, uh, because sex isn't a trigger, <laughs> you know, it's our internal dialogue yeah. Yeah. that tells us, you know, what we're, 
what we're really seeking. That's the trigger, right? Because the, the disease is in us. It's not in the behavior or the things that are happening around us. Um, the disease is in us. And, and so my mind is either the alcoholic mind or not, right? If I have an alcoholic or addict mind, then, um, then I will seek comfort in things outside of me, drugs, whatever it is, and it'll, it will come up seemingly surprisingly. Uh, but the truth is, is that I just have to know my own limitations at that moment for what, you know, what I can do and can't do. And, um, and it's just, I know what I can do and I know what I can't do. Um, but it takes a while to get there. And the best way to get there is an inventory. And the absolute best way to understand what is okay for you right now is to do an inventory, do a sexual ideal, do, you know, and then I do like more than a sexual ideal, I'll do like sexual ideals. Like what are, what different situations, right. and you talk about this too, what different situations, what is my sexual idea deal in this situation? What is my sexual ideal just temporarily? And what is my long-term sexual ideal? And what is my, you know what I mean? And really get to know like what would be safe for me? And, and what's just, safe for me? Right, right. Sure. exactly. <laughs> So you're right on track, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is, is all of those experiences, even the experience of going out after having sex is one of the most useful experiences you'll ever have because that really is going to inform like what you know, you know, the trickiness of your disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just means you need to be careful. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to be abstinent. You don't have to, you know, you just need to really get to know yourself through that fourth step and then be careful and know when your disease is knocking on the door. And another thing we discussed, like, really bring God with you uh, into these situations, you know, because what happens is we compartmentalize our sex life and we turn it into this dirty thing that, well, I'm going to do it over there and then come back to sobriety over here. You know what I mean? It's like, no, our, our sober life, our spiritual life, our, our you know, our, our lives need to, need to all be part of this, this journey. And uh, there's no part of us that can be just sort of like, well, there's that over there, you know. It's right. like we have to move as a concerted being through our sobriety. I got a little uh, kind of tip I learned. This uh, a therapy thing. This might sound like geeky, but um, I don't. It, it kind of worked for me. Just, just a practical thing about um, staying in safe zones, like wherever they have to be. Um, you know, if you're, let's say, if, uh, if jerking off is here and fucking is here, if they're different, like. Steps on a ladder or something like that. You know, you kind of have to know where you're at and just practically speaking, stay where you're at. So if you can only, you know, if jerking off isn't a trigger, you can do that. You know, kissing is a trigger, don't do that. But if it is, you know, and you can take yourself, just asking yourself, you know, real questions and, and kind of progress in a practical way. Just only go as far as feels safe and, and, and that that kind of works. Without getting into it too, too much. Uh, mm. Funny enough, when I had 15 years of honest sobriety, I was on a cruise ship where a straight guy that I became friends with um, completely, it's just wherever he's at, nothing to do with about the sex because there was no sex. But um, I went out of it. So what was really weird is he um, came back from my room from the crew bar and brought some hash from his home country of Amsterdam and asked me if I wanted some. I said, No, 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 I'm a sober member of God. That's not a problem. I had no craving at all. Next day he comes up, you know, and allowing like a little more of whatever he's doing. He's drinking because I think like, this guest sweet goes on a couple times. And this is a real true story for anybody who doesn't think you can lose time because that was a real true 15 years. Like this 32 days is true. And um, what I found, I was romanticizing him, first of all. Not, you know, I said all my truths to him, but then when he's like, would you want a shot of this pot? hash or whatever, I'm like, I didn't know what a shot was, I said, no, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, he goes, no, it's where we lock lips, like, so all that went in my head was, like, locking lips with this break, I became, like, one of my best friends on the cruise ship, but he got fired for drugs, and, um, so when we locked lips, and he blew that pot in my mouth, and I was trying to rationalize, no sponsor was there, God, like, whatever wasn't there, and it just went in my mouth, and he left, and we never had sex, he was straight. I mean, he got me confused because he said he had been with the she-males, so all of these stories of him coming up was like confusing me. But um, I still got high from that. And then I was going to call my sponsor the next day and <coughs> was in a gray area, this is what happened, blah, blah. So that might have been a really gray area. But then we got into Acapulco and I bought a quarter of a pound of pot. <laughs> 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 Not so great. <laughs> 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 like 
few months after that. So that's when my disease progressed from 15 years of abstinence of everything, probably. So in answer to that, it is like, it's not the sex, it's the alcoholic mind that like just wasn't like sober that allowed that to slip. We never had sex. So that was like a perfect definition of like, we never had sex yet. And he never kissed me. He just blew right. up. Right. right. The motives. Yeah. 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 Like, right. what was your motive? Right. My motive was romanticizing right. him and I'm going to be the one. Right. And yeah. you couldn't yeah. say it. So you were keeping the secret. Yeah. Right. Like there was like this, all these underlying motives going on. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, it isn't like, and I love your rationales too, but it wasn't like, I can do any kind of sex I want with somebody sober. I think that's too agreed on with the people, but if there are certain triggers that I'm romanticizing, whatever that was, the mind was romanticizing love with like the stranger. And then it took me a while to get back. I got a DUI. I took a dirty 16 year cake at the Valley big meeting. And then I, I got a DUI between 16 and 17 from alcohol in the desert. I'm like, I don't think I can lie about this DUI. <laughs> <laughs> so it just like, you know, it, it just gets complicated in the mind. So I'm trying to basically get it back. Yeah. I, uh, I think I've shared before in, in this meeting. Um, so my first profile, online profile, after my sponsor said, you delete everything, put your fingers on the keyboard and pray and ask God to rewrite it for you. And was Nikas, newly sober off of meth, don't know whether I'm a top or a bottom, need kind, compassionate, caring people to hand walk me through this experience. Uh, please don't have any judgments or expectations because I have no idea what's going to happen. And angels showed up, you know, just that, that, that God gave me this thing to put out there. And then that was received by other people who were like, oh, yes, of course, I, I can help with this. And so, you know, the reason I'm saying that is, you know, I don't know where you're looking for or who you're looking to do these things with, but sometimes it's about the partners that we choose. You know, if, you, if you're choosing a partner that's still kind of, there's a possibility or a potential or, the, you know, the, the, then, then that might be some place to also then change up the partners, you know, change. And I don't know if it's, you know, asking people at meetings or, I mean, I, mean, I you know, it's, it's great when people come to me and say, hey, would you, would you, sure, absolutely. You know, it just, that's one of those, um, you know, where, where are you looking and, and who are you looking with? I love that idea of like putting up that protective cloud mm -hmm. in just a little paragraph. Mm -hmm. You put something out there that, mm -hmm. you know, like it's only evil is going to have to like consciously try to break through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they do, though. And they do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you they have do, to be though. centered but, in but what you, you want. You're centered in that, yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you, you need to walk around with that mentally, you don't even have to necessarily maybe say it. But what are you going to say to Sarah to any of that? Uh, it was just that, um, you know, I had more of a sober profile before, and it seemed to have this weird effect. I would get triggers, and then say, I was an AA for Blah, 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 that's all bullshit. It's like all this anger. So I kind of like neutralized, mm -hmm. uh, neutralized that, and uh, and then also too, I basically uh, realized that I was also being very judgmental about other people and mm -hmm. you know what they do with their lives. Um, it's not my place. And mm -hmm. So that was kind of a, a good lesson, mm -hmm. you know, in that too. And so there's been a different. Um, Attraction, attraction coming, you know, once I sort of got rid of my, you know, stuff that was, uh, you know, my hangups, mm -hmm. and, and, and just kind of like just let people be what they are. You know, just, there's some navigation, um, but uh, it's it's just easier easier to tell, I think, just putting the whole sober thing out there. Now it's more, it's really more neutral. It's like, you know, no excessive drinking of drugs. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sober. <laughs> and so the fact is some people are going to drink and right. because they're not going to bed, um, <laughs> usually. Okay. Uh, and, um, but, you know, just the drug thing is really off the table for me to be around that. You know, sometimes it's yeah, just, I agree with that. Sometimes the symbols is just making eye statements. I don't drink or use drugs, and I prefer not to be with someone who is. You know, you know, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, a friend of mine, you know, we were talking about, I don't know, you know, bring God, bring your integrity, have fun. And then a friend of mine went to the bathhouse, brought God, brought integrity, had fun, and he went out. Mm -hmm. you know, and this just happened like in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know what, that's an awesome. But yeah, consequence, like kicked out of sober living. I, mean, I, I want to give myself permission to, you know, to do all this experiment you guys did. But then again, there's always any type of experiment, there's a risk. But, but there's a risk, and the risk is mitigated, though, by you knowing yourself. <coughs> and if you don't know yourself, then yes, your stuff will happen. Like, you really have to go into this sort of knowing yourself. And, and the thing is, is that, um, you know, when you, when you make a decision, there's so many things going on in that decision, right? Like, it, it really has to, you know, bring other people into it. Like, I wonder if that guy ran that by someone else. Oh, no, no. Yeah, we, we both um, had the, 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 the passes, and, and uh, I decided not to go because I talked to my sponsor, and I couldn't bullshit my, I couldn't get him to co-sign my bullshit. <laughs> I tried. Um, so I didn't go because I, I had I was honest. And like, you know, right. I was like, fuck that. But he went. So. Right. And had he explored with his sponsor? Right. He probably, probably right. sold somebody on his bullshit. Yeah, and how do you explore with a sponsor? Well, what am I going to do if this happens? What am I going to do if this happens? Right. What am I going to do if that happens? Right? Like, yeah. that's important. Right. It's important to really, like, plan ahead and know, yeah. like, how will I respond if someone pulls out a pipe? That is the whole thing. We're supposed to, like, stay little there, stay outside the door. Like, I can't face him, so I know I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? Like, almost that basic. And he went by himself. Well, when his sober pal who was going with him backs out, then right. he has to decide. To right, inside right, himself, right, well, right. am I going to go and, and possibly be in danger, or am I going to not? And that's his decision. And you know, yeah, that kind of me out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the book says that we can go any place on God's great earth if our motives are correct and if we're spiritually fit. Right. And spiritually fit, only you know, only He knows if He's spiritually fit. You know, my spiritual fitness comes from my daily practice, from my level of integrity, from my ability to be honest, from my ability to be honest and forthright with other people. My spiritual fitness is based in that. And only I know what my fitness is. You know, I, I can bullshit to everybody else what my fitness is, but I know, and there's no lying to me. And, and if I try to lie to myself, I relapse. Yeah, there's also a line in the big book, like if you're going to these places to sort of live vicariously yeah. through other people's, yeah, that, like... Then you you're gonna put yourself in danger because there's this attraction like we yeah. have this yeah, built-in yeah. attraction to it. So if we're going and we're thinking, well, we're just gonna watch other people do it. Right. If you're not spiritually fit, <laughs> that turns into right. well, I want that because your yeah. brain wants it. Like you you can't get past that yeah. unless you have a sober mind. Uh, the last time I went to the bathhouse, uh, like when I moved back here, I was like, okay, we're gonna go. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's gonna happen. So let's get all of this in the paper and we get it all in my brain because it's gonna happen. So, but I always divert back to like if you do good things, you're gonna get good things. And I, I lived, I lived a block and a half from the North Hollywood Spa, and you know it's dumped now. They're, they're they all are kind of dumpy now. They're, well, everyone's at Century Spa now. They're all going to like the Korean baths now, whatever. So I walked over there when I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get crazy, and so uh, and I stood my ground. You know, there were tweakers everywhere, and they were, they were pawing. I mean, I was like, you need to dig a hike, honey, and go take a shower. And I am, I, you know, that, and that's my defense. I am a little judgy, you know. I would be like, because I just know how it's going to happen. And I stood my ground, and I was like, you know, I watched, I waited. I just waited it out. And this guy came out of nowhere. And got and gave me exactly what I needed, and then I went home. I was like, okay, that's all God was going to allow me to have, huh? You said you know what's going to happen. What was going to happen? When I came back to, to no, no, when you talked to John the tweakers, he said he was going to be taken down because they were tweaking. Yeah. Because you knew what that would be. Well, you go to the bathroom. They'll be there. Yes, exactly. I already knew there's they're they're they're, they're, they're going to be there. Period. The end. This is the reality. You cannot go to a bathhouse and be like, "Oh, everyone's gonna be thin." Right. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I ain't that blonde. Yeah. So <laughs> I go knowing the worst and just choosing to stick to my guns, just to like plan. it's the ride for me. It was the AIDS ride all over again. Just stay on your bike. Mm. And something good's gonna happen, or nothing will happen, which is just God saving your fucking ass and telling you, "Bitch, you need to go home." Right. <laughs> right. I so, but like, yep. but the one, this one time I went, you know, I mean, you know, 
he wasn't a top, but that's okay. You know, I'm like, I'm, I top so much now, I just can't, it's, it's amazing. Um, but this guy just gave me exactly what I needed, and then mm -hmm. he went home, and then I was like, you know, I think it's time to come home now. Mm -hmm. And it was getting late, and, you yeah. know, people were starting to hum around again. I'm like, I need to get out of here. Yeah. So that's, that's how I look at it. If you're going to go into those environments, yeah. stay true to what you're supposed to be doing, even if it's, if, even if it's against what you want, and something good might come out of it, or nothing. I just came from a weekend for two days in uh, Long Beach, and it was just a night actually, and I thought I wanted to party and play and hang out and do all that, and I, and I was doing it, and then I found myself in a situation where the energy in the room just felt so thick. It was like walking through butter. Was like, and I said to the guys, there were two guys there, and I guess they were kind of like together, not together, one was living, I don't know. But I said, um, do you guys feel the energy in the room? Like it's, it just got really, really dark. And I got up, walked, and I turned around and looked at the door, and the door was like golden, bright, yellow light. And I just bolted. Yeah. I didn't say anything. I just started walking on the door and left yeah. and walked really fast. And what progressed after that was like, he didn't he, he, he watch the cops. And I kind of had gotten my, like, Mm. You know, safe, my safe, my safe, my safe embrace, I think, because, um, you know, they, they call me and I hear, like, the, the static behind behind the voices on the phone. They're like, yeah, don't go back to that house. And I was like, I don't know my car. Like, You're not going to drive your car. You know, take the train home. And I was like, oh, fuck. So, I don't know where it came from, but it just, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I had to, I could not listen to it. You know, I walked out the door, the minute I walked out the door, I was in tears, and I didn't know what, what it oh. was, and I couldn't explain it or articulate it until... I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing because like, like you show up, you tell the truth and you've made phone calls, you know, it's like you've called the right people and you just, You're here. you know, yeah. and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's happening. Can I ask you, looking back, do you feel like, was there like a, a trigger moment? Like, like, oh, oh, he's hot. I'm dealing with an ex who I, who, we were married and we were divorced mm -hmm. and we were we, we treat each other a lot, like our relationship is just very, very, very um, intense. And whenever I, I, I left, I was like, I just have to get out of this house. I can't be here with you because it's very difficult. It's a lot of energy wasted when we can go take care of it another way. And so I left, and every time I go, if I leave the house, I feel so free. And that was a trigger for me. I was just like, oh, I'll just do this one night, just this one night, I'll do mm. it right now. Party and then work and then, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can never, I, was, I know I wanted to meet Alan five days later, but I can never look back and say, <laughs> okay, well, what was, you know, was that depression, was that lonely, was that, I, I can never, you know, they always ask me what was the trigger. I can never remember what the trigger was. Well, I'll tell you, but for I me, I to five days later. right, but for me, the trigger is I'm an addict. Right? That that. Like, that is plain and simple, pure, pure and simple. It's like, I'm an addict. And I, you know, I can go without using drugs for a while, but when I do, I don't know what's going to happen, right? I don't know where I'll end up, what crazy shit will happen, or what I'll leave behind, or, and the thing is, is that proves I'm an addict. That's it. You know, that proves I'm an addict. And, and so, I got to remember what I'm powerless over, mm -hmm. right? And I know I'm powerless over crystal meth. And I also know I'm, I'm a little powerless over obsessive situations where I get in my obsessive yeah. thinking, yeah. and I get into a bathhouse, and I'm like, I've got to have that. You know, and and where, whereas he was able to like <laughs> say, the door. Well, like he was able to say, I can have that or not, right? Yeah, so yeah, I, not. sometimes I get in those places I can't do that, and I remember that that's one of my powerlessness issues that I'm working on. I I've been big on like um, owning my triggers, you know, and identifying because that's what keeps me safe. You know, um, I know if, if I see that trigger coming, I I, I might have to run. That's the best I can do, whatever, change my thought, but 
There's another level of freedom, though, that's where you don't have the triggers, right? Because you have a sober yeah. mind. And that'll come. Yeah. It will absolutely come. Um, and for now, you're just keeping yourself safe. But the thing is, is, there is a place where we don't have to keep ourselves safe because we actually, as the book says, we are actually free men. Yeah. And, uh, and that takes the work. That takes the doing the steps and doing the inventories. I mean, you said alcoholic, but that trigger, so for my 15 years that that guy blew that my mouth, my trigger was, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that, but it was like, I need to leave now. I, if I had listened to my intuition right there, I knew that going in my mouth is a slip. I didn't want to play it all out, but that's because I'm an addict. So I, was just wanted, nice. I wanted him, but it was like, it felt <laughs> like but it was just like, I knew that the third day when he said shot, I knew what he was talking about. I didn't never really have that happen, so I wanted it with him, but... But I just what I wanted him to do is just put his mouth on my mouth. But that was the moment that intuition I didn't pay attention to, and I allowed him. That was the beat. So like it's weird, but like trigger is know your intuition. Like you know when you say I feel unsafe to do this right now, and then everybody's been saying just pay attention to that. I you know so that experience has helped me in other things, and even going on this trip. Yeah, I gotta say this, and then I gotta do this. Like this whole trip for me, I thought it was gonna be about everything else that it was. It was like about going to the gym, going to meetings. Yeah, other things happened, but it was nothing what I thought it was gonna be. Like, and it was all intuition. Like, ah, oh, like nothing. Everything was like a perfect moment of agreement all the time. But it was like just the next thing. But I never got off of that. I never got off of like I wasn't safe. You know, one of the other things, too, though, is um, there's not a, a, a chapter on relapse prevention in here. There's not a chapter about watching your, your, your triggers because the book is very, very clear. Powerless means I have lost the power and choice. I am placed in a position where I'm beyond human aid, which means there's nobody anything can tell me about me, including what I can tell myself about me, that at some point I can actually keep myself sober. Right. So beyond human aid means I actually turn to a power greater than myself, which is keeping me sober. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Because there's one day when the triggers come and you're not going to respond yeah. the way you do now. There's one yeah. day where you'll be like, fuck it. And there's one day exactly. you'll be like, oh, I can't do this any longer. You know right. what I mean? Right. You are weak. Right. But right. the program, the right. principles, God is not. Yeah. Right. Right. I like to look at the evidence of the results because I met Nikas several weeks ago and I done, I have relapsed. Twice. This is the third time. And it's just gotten worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse every time. Like, <laughs> the experiences just get more and more traumatic and more and more like, dramatic. Yeah, and you know, and I. I, I, I that. I really, I really feel as though when I'm in like the bathhouse and when I'm in situations, I feel like I'm an ambassador of sobriety, you know, because people are like, you're what? You're, you're you know, the guy asking you, how, how do you do that? I, I'm so, I'm, what? It's like people can't actually fathom the fact that you can be getting double penetrated fucking and, you know, and sober in a group. It's like, what? But no, that's, that's what, that's what we are. It's like, and we turn out, we turn to be, we turn into being uh, ambassadors of sobriety. Yeah. This is what, that is what a sober slut looks like right here. You do. Yeah. That's, 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 I'll be the first to say it is not. Yeah. Right. It takes. Because you will fool yourself. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not there, but, but that's a, that's a, that's a legitimate goal. Absolutely. To be that free. Absolutely. And Fucking stone holds over and clear about that. Yeah. And about being an ambassador everywhere we go in that way, that how you know, like I I that the bathhouse is like maneuver in and out of but like waving taping like like telling that guy, Oh, by the way, I'm this, I'm probably you know that's the stuff that's like yes. you know. It reminds me of this other thing was where we really have to change our identity of who we think we are. Right, because we certainly had an identity of who we were when we were loaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we built a whole personality around that. And we built a whole career. Built, though, before that, it wasn't like that. Right, mm -hmm. and it was totally constructed. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so we do that in sobriety as well, and we construct this new identity mm -hmm. that's yeah. centered around other things, and and has much more of a, I don't know, it's much more of a beauty to it, mm -hmm. and yeah. more of a grace to right. it, and 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 yet gets to be sexual. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. So. It's it's totally possible. Just, you know, initially, in your early months, it's hard to wrap your brain around that. Yeah. Because your whole identity is so wrapped up in, in you know, the rituals of it. 
That's where I learned, you know, if, if you're, if you can't process it, it's not time yet. Mm. That's what I learned. It's like a little baby, you know, you can't expect a three month old to walk. I heard this other thing you too. have to let yourself grow where you stop growing. Yeah. That's yeah. for me. That's what I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Christ, yeah. I gotta, yeah. I gotta rewind yeah. the tape. Takes the unwind. It's the great undoing. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. That's really it. Spiritual awakening isn't about learning a whole new set of beliefs. Spiritual awakening is about unlearning everything I know. It's about about really breaking it all down to, I'm just going to trust right now, right. right now, right now. It's not, I'm going to have a whole yeah, yeah. system of beliefs right. that's going right. to run my yeah. life going forward in this whole new yeah, way of doing things. And, you know, and I hear that all the time in the room. People talk about, you know, the, oh, you got to do this, you got to do this. I don't know. It's, it's all right. It's a whole foot. No, no, no. It's about, it's just about here. Coming right back to here. now. Right. Yeah. Here, yeah. right now. Yeah. There's another thing that I heard, which is really useful, which is if it's not an immediate yes, it might be a no. You know, it's most likely enough. You know, which well, is similar that's, to what, that's what Oprah says. If I don't know, <laughs> she used to say, if it's I don't know, it's no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is, because what you're erring on the side of loving yourself and protecting yourself. And there's right. nothing wrong with that. There will be time to get yeah. fucked next week. Yes. You know, Hello, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's why, and I have a confession to make. I have never been to a communion party because every time I tell myself, I think I'm going to go, I get ready. I don't get ready to go. Like, I think I'm going to go, and I stare at the website, and I read your mails, and I'm like, you know, there's something. There's just a tiny piece of me that's yeah. like, not, not yet. Oh, yeah. And I won't go. And I used to get all hung up on it. It's like, you know what? Leave that alone. You, you could be yeah. shopping or getting your hair color. A billion other things that are safer instead of wondering what's, why am I not going to this yet? Or why your intuition is... Is being like, you know, you don't need to go over there. Yeah. A lot of my intuition is like, bitch, have you, you've had enough dick. You've had every goddamn dick you've had in the world. Well, you, were, you were the most gifted 20-something little fucker <laughs> son of a bitch that ever walked the earth. Really? <laughs> it's time for you to I'm go probably, do something else. You, know? <laughs> you probably recognize when you are sort of doing that sort of double take into, well, something might happen. You know, like there's something. I recognize when that's when that voice that I was just saying, like, you know, my voice is like, really? Yeah. Okay, let's count how many. Yeah, right. Let's count how many times you've been rebuilt. And See, I always have to re rewind my tape and revisit that. And why were you rebuilt? Because well, I wasn't paying attention. The same restaurant <laughs> you go through that with is, and you, I'm probably different in this room, in this area, but I can't count how many times since I've been in the program I'm over 22 years, I've been off in crystal mouth. Somebody's smoking it in my room in the bathhouse, all the smell of it. Uh, I, my intuition keeps going, no, no, and I've never done crystal mouth yet to this day. Not every fucking, like, smoked up. Fifty dollar rock of cocaine where I had a seizure, but like you're talking about, I just my intuition is like, I that's my death. Yeah, like yeah. That, I'm right, just like, right. So I'm like, and I have all of you to thank for that so far. But yeah, you know, that mean. <laughs> I never will, but I, I've never. It's been offered, and it's always been an easy no, no, no. Not that many sober people think this way. Um, I find, as far as like the joy and the authenticity, you know. Taking the shame out of it, I, 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 I don't know. This is a lot of sober people I meet are still like full of shame. Yeah. About this. And yeah. Uh, so, um, I kind of feel like I'm doing it on my own a lot. So, so much shame out there. People, you know, they could be sober a long time, but they're still carrying a lot of shame around this right. issue. Right. But coming into the It says, it says in the literature, if you're NAAA, whatever, all the literature says it in its own way. Sometimes you have to seek outside help. You know, you have to seek outside help. Like I had a very good friend, I mean, he's very well known, his name's John Denham, who I absolutely love. And he was a real gem in that, like I was having that, those issues. And at that time he was like, look, I'm not licensed yet, but I'm gonna be, let me ask you some questions. And he helped me get rid of that. Cause I was like, this is not me. Like these pearls just start fitting my neck, right? And I'm just not having any fun and I'm not really happy and I wanna do this and I wanna do that. And so within a couple weeks that he helped me end that. So, you know, and I think there was a funny part where I was like, oh, I went to go see him. I went to see him, he went to work, I had a doctor's appointment, that's when I still lived in the desert. And uh, I was driving home and he kind of knew when to call because it was, you know, habitual. I would always go to his house and do the same thing when I'd come back to see the doctor. He's like, how was the doctor? I said, well, I've been cleared for all the diseases. And he's like, where are you going, bitch? And I said, to the flex on the way out of town. He goes, you dirty whore. And I was like, what? He's like, I love you, honey. 
He's like, you think you're over that now? Like, I remember that when I did some, you know, because I, I do crazy shit like that sometimes. But the first time I ever did it with a clear conscience, like, he was like, oh, my God, you're, you, you, he, he, it was just a fun moment in that, you know, it was actually kind of funny. I'm like, well, you know, I don't live in L.A. anymore. i got to get some on the way out of town. It, so it was really funny. You know, there's 147 promises in the book, and all of those promises have to do in a new way of thinking, a new way of, or the, the attitude in our mind shifts. So you'll intuitively know how to handle it every situation that used to baffle you. I mean, that, that doesn't mean that you'll know what to do. It just, you would intuitively know how to, right? You know, so it's like, I'm, I'm all, all, there's so many things, right? Like the fear of economic insecurity will leave you. So, so much of this stuff is, when we spiritually awaken, fear, shame, uh, guilt, all those things, they just fall away. And you're just mm -hmm. left yeah. just with this just sense of knowingness. And, and that knowingness comes from here. It, it's not its not a knowingness that you, you centered up here. It's a knowingness that comes down here. And that's what a true spiritual awakening is. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm observant of other people in the room. And when people are really like, oh, no, I, you can't do that. I don't, you know, I was like, okay. Well, I mean, that's, to me, that's just, okay, I can see where you are spiritually. You know? All right. Gotcha. All right. Um, you know, but for myself. I have to know where I am. And if there's still fear, then those are, those are the things that the steps, you know, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, all 11 steps prior to that helped me deal with those things, those fears and those other emotions and resentments, guilt, shame, and remorse. I have steps to be able to work all that shit out mm -hmm. so that before I start giving this away to other people, all that stuff is handled, mm -hmm. done, finished. That, that's how, like you said, that's how you say stage. So it's not like, oh, here comes a trigger. Yes, I, I, I processed. You know, yeah. Like, right. You can't hurt me because I, I'm not afraid. So yeah. That's how I say it. Yeah. So, exactly. It's a lot of unlearning, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. So, so yeah. A lot of unlearning. Last night, it just happened in an instant, but it had to be happening. I realized that I've been right. into my ego. For the past few days. Right. You know, tell me this and tell me that. And yeah. I know he's telling me. Yeah. You know, yeah, what, what I want, what I want, what I want. You guys said it took years, plural, like when, when you felt, uh, not that you got it, but that you were in a safe space with sex. Not necessarily. I mean, you know, a couple of years before I really felt like I had the grounding to yeah. to really be present sexually. But even in my first year, I yeah. I was able to explore and figure that out because right. I probably couldn't have gotten to that grounded space without right. exploring it. But exploring it in a way that was open and honest, had channels of communications mm -hmm. with my sponsor, with my right. friends, my sober posse, like really sort of keeping everyone and keeping the village close. Yeah. You know? So even if you stumbled. Right. My, my sponsor was very clear. He says, look, he says, I want you to start having sex immediately. He says, and if you relapse over sex, I want you to relapse before you have 30 days. Because the worst thing you can do is collect all these chips, especially a big year long one, and right. go out over sex. He right. says, if you go out over sex, I want you to go out, come back and tell me what it was about. And we'll figure it out. <laughs> and, you know, it was like, there's just no fear about it. It's just relieved all the fear, like took away all the fear. Like, oh, that going out is possible. And uh, that's, that's not so bad either. As long as I come back and tell the truth about it. Because then we can or, actually. What's even better, tell the truth before you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Because if you, if you most likely, if you are going to do something and you talk about it, and yeah. you make yeah. a plan yeah. and you discuss it, you probably won't go out right. because you, you, your mind is it's already. You'll take all the air out of it. And you don't have any feedback either. But I had a sponsor that where I put those 15 years together at that point, and I kept going in and out and in and out before I got those 15 years. It's a long journey. And so he said, this is the next time you're going to go out. Just what you said, I want you to tell me before when you're going to do it. He didn't say go out and do it and then right. come back. Right. So I had the whole thing like that. I was like, I'm doing this tonight. And I called him. It was never such a different person. So I'm going to go buy the pipe right now. I'm going to buy the coat right now. You told me to let you know. I'm right. going to hang up the phone. Right. Blah, blah, blah. That I have all ready. And um, I just finished playing the piano. And everything's great. Like, I feel really good, but you, you want the truth first. Here you go. Yeah. And he goes, great. I'll call me tomorrow. <laughs> he just hung up. But I did do what he asked right. me to do. And yep. he didn't argue and so. Which which somehow there's somehow when it, when when you know that it's okay that if you do and not say I'm exactly. not promoting it. I'm yeah, yeah. not promoting in any way, shape, or form promoting relapse. But there's some something about when you know that oh, you know, it's 
It's my decision. Yeah, right. It's, I'm doing, right. It's not a secret it's, anything. Yeah. I'm not fooling myself. Then you're like, well, shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it was so weird that there was no like trying to talk. About right. I came back with those cries the next day after I yeah. but yeah, it's just like wow. You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Yes, please. Um, I know this is like kind of maybe this is a little bit, but I was getting on binary again, like straight for him. Because sometimes they want to do drugs, and I don't want to do drugs. I, mean, I just have my boundaries, but mm-hmm. they always like, oh, you want to come over, or, you know, my wife's over, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't even respond to that. Like, I don't even want to respond to that. Like, how do you respond to that? Um, well, f- first of all, I, I have. I was just talking to these married men, and I'm just like, yeah, so. The, yeah. Well, no, they want me. It's like they want me. To, it's kind of it's weird. So I have a thing called a sexual ideal, and one of the things that I don't do is other people that are in relationships, and be, because that's just that's just something I personally don't do, and I and I know a lot of people that do, um, but it's just something I I don't do, and and I usually don't do that with guys that are in relationships with other guys, not uh, straight ones, but just because I'm ultimately looking for a relationship, and so if I'm going and I'm trying to go fishing. In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pond where there's no fish because all the fish are taken, <laughs> then that's not going to do me very, very good. So, um, but, but one of the things, like, so, so I wouldn't actually come up to that problem because I've already said, yeah, this doesn't work for me, that doesn't work for me, and this doesn't work for me. So I would, I would first of all, come up to the idea, is, is being going out with those guys in, in female relations, is that work for you? Are, I mean, I'm interested, I mean, I find it interesting. If they're using, you mean? Well, I don't think if they're using me, it's more like. No, no, if they're using. Using drugs. Well, they do, they are using drugs. Right. Is that I your boundary? What is your boundary? I'm not going to do. What is your boundary? I thought I was going to say, you know what? I was saying I'll do pot, that's it. But that's the problem. I don't know if I can work with it, but I just, I just feel like sometimes they want to, like, oh, let's do a little bit of this, and I'm like, you know. It just, it, yeah, I don't feel like it's comfortable. Like, and I don't want to be part of the meowness because the wife's there. Then don't do it. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, in a connection, like, what am I looking for in a connection? Exactly. You know what I mean? And if you're yeah. not getting what you need in that connection, maybe stop doing that kind of connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Try something you ever been here. Yeah. They don't have the wife or the girlfriend, but they're by like, oh, I mean. Well, they're married with the wife or the wife. But you don't get the single ones that are like that. Like, I'm kind of by, but I'd like you to come over. That's a good question. Oh. Yeah. Some of them, I think, are very good at it. They're by. Yeah. Yeah, it's just interesting because I was talking to Marianne and I was very Marianne and Kate. So, yeah, go deeper with I'm attracting these Marianne. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's kind of complicated. Once it gets complicated, I mean, it's just complicated. Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a, if it's, if it's not feeding your soul, yeah. then, you know, you may not want it, you know. Yeah. I'm just afraid to go beyond that. I mean, I'm interested, but I don't want to go for it. They want to do better than substance, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's tempting, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I would fall into that, and it's like, okay, mm-hmm. let's go over and pretend it never happened, but I can't be. I can be treated. Right, right. sort of similar to his situation with yeah, the locking the lips. Yeah. Right. Like, it's, I, it can be very... Like you can get really caught up in this idea, you know. I get it. So, yeah. Well, if you know that that your boundary is is slippery there, <laughs> then just maybe not. <laughs> yeah, and and like and for me, it's like about what what am I actually looking for in a sexual connection? Yeah. Is it is it just the down and dirtiness of it? And sometimes that's all it is. But if that's all it is, then Bathhouses are great, you know. So, somehow that somewhere that where that is, you know. But but I'm looking actually for some, a slightly deeper, at, at least a two-way connection, you know. Right. Yeah. I had one approach me was a client. He, he was a heavy smoker. Yeah. He was a drummer and he had his little daughter, and his wife split up. Uh huh. But we're still conversing on Facebook. Yeah. 
<laughs> so he's now the chorus. And then when I met recently, I met that house in front of us. Yeah. And um, he said he had kids, two kids. And because I live with my, my wife and ex wife, I was like, I was pretending like, oh, okay. And I was going to go and I actually had sex with him. Mm -hmm. But he wanted more. So. <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of like, and then we exchanged numbers, and then it was like, I told him, you know, and I know he was doing party drugs, yeah. and he was like, I don't do that, you know. I, was, yeah. I did my thing, but I knew that when we exchanged numbers, he texted me, like, oh, I'm not going to go. And he goes, oh, well, you know, you have to go over, it's a room in here. I'm like, no, my room is here. I you out of town, I don't know why. It's like, no, he's here, I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> I just don't want to, you know, cross that boundary, you know, I don't want to draw, you know. Just, right. What I found is I mean, I, I'm interested in him, but I'm, I'm not interested in what this is. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm interested more in dating and potential, you know. Like, right. But what I found is I can't invest in an addict who's using. Like, it's just, you won't get much out of it. Right. And if you know that he's, fits the profile of someone who's an addict, you won't get much out of it. Yeah. You just won't. Yeah. I mean, That's unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I feel like, um, like with you, knowing what you wanted, knowing what you wanted to deal with, and not even letting them approach you, just like, uh, like no, yeah. this is not Get out. Yeah. You know, there might be something, you're, you're cute, you're sweet, blah, blah, but it's wrong. Not, you know, you're wrong. That leaves a space for something that you really mm. want to show up there. Yeah, yeah right. You're right. I think that makes sense. Absolutely. Right. I mean, I text some boundaries and said, this is what I'll do, yeah. but this is it, you know, and yeah. then I'll make you come over. And and then just know we we as addicts are selfish, self seeking, self centered. So we might tell you your boundaries are okay, but when we get you to our house exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. that's all about to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're very goal oriented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You might not be able to actually uh, explain that one away. You might just say, "Sorry, I can't do it." You know, just like you might just end it without an ex big explanation. Try yeah. something new, like a single person. <laughs> it's gay. I mean, if you're gay, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They stop calling it for like I live by myself and I'm like sorry my roommate's here when it's a no like just I mean, even because I don't want to be like this I don't do yeah. the explanation all the time but they'll get it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 question is like no oh yeah no is a complete answer right yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's uh, 529 cool um, thank you all so much for participating and attending. Um, I really value the, all you guys just being able to get as honest as you did today and talk about the stuff that really matters in this sobriety stuff. Um, one month from today, first Saturday of next month, I actually don't know what that date is, but um, we'll be doing this again and we'll have a whole new topic and uh, love to have you all join us again. Thank you so much and thank you so much online for visiting us and uh, hopefully we'll see you out here in LA one day. Take care. Thank you.